Good day everybody and welcome to this episode of Secrets from the Support Faults. Today's episode is about technical data sheets within Treedem Picador. Let's start with a quick look at what uh, Treedem and Picador are and then we will go into the application. So Picador is actually a suite of applications. There are five modules that all work fluently together. For today's episode, we will focus on the 2D design module, the CAD drawing module. If you are interested in the other modules, you can find a video on our YouTube channel that goes on about all of these in detail. The 2D CAD module is meant for the structural design of packaging. It allows for the importing and exporting of a lot of file formats, and it has the possibility to do imposition of your drawings. Besides that, it also allows you to create parametric models. These parametric models can then be used within the Packlib application to easily change the size values of your packaging if you want to use it at a different size. At the bottom here I added the technical data sheet because that is of course the subject of today's webinar. The technical data sheet will allow you to create a printable file of a certain size, for example an A4 file, a letter sized file, that you can easily print and put in a folder or attach to a certain order. It can contain technical and commercial information about your products. For example, it can contain the customer, the order number, the packaging name, a lot of specific information there. And besides that, it can automatically fill and calculate certain values about the packaging as well. So you're able to automatically add, for example, the length of all the cutting lines that you have, or the height and width of the drawing. There's not much use in sticking to a PowerPoint presentation for this, so let's dive straight into the application and have a look at how this all works in practice. If you know Picador, then you know that this is normally a Windows application. I work on a MacBook, but I run a virtual machine which runs Windows 10, and this all works perfectly fine. For this webinar, we shall be using the 2D application, And here we are in a blank window. Now the technical data sheet is actually its own tab at the top here. So you have technical data sheets with a variety of options that you can use with that data sheet. I shall show you straight on what the possibilities are, how far you can go with this. And for that I shall open a packaging file from Packlib. And in Packlip, we can go to the root. In the root, I can go to the four-piece folder. That doesn't really matter, but I have a nice complex box in here that I want to use for this. So you can see this box contains a lot of cutting lines and a lot of folding lines. And I can use this button at the top here to immediately open this file in the 2D application. Okay, in the 2D application, I can go back to the technical data sheet tab at the top and I can simply click insert a technical data sheet. Now this shows all the technical data sheets that I have used before. The top one, Fishdem, is actually the demo file that everybody has. So if you installed Picador, you will be able to see this as well. You can see it is kept in the C drive underneath Picador and then just fishdem.des. I'll click OK. And there we are. This is what happens. So we get a questionnaire and we get this complex information sheet all around your drawing. Now in the questionnaire, we can add certain information that you fill in yourself. So you can see this is mostly French. That's because Tridem is a French company and some parts of the application have not been really been translated before. But also all these names are linked to input fields that are placed all around this document. 
So these are not like base names. You can create your own names, your own questions to fill in here. So in this demo file, the questions were set in French. So if I say for name, I can say this is a double wall box. I'm not sure what they mean with quality in this case, but I'll say good just because it fills something in. And we can go on like that, just add, for example, the interior size for this box. And we can move on. And then over here, I can say for colors, it is black and blue. That's about the print. Then I can move on and say, maybe I want to use a certain machine. So I can say, I want to use the slaughter. I'll press an X here. And I want to use this one. Okay, there we go. I filled in some stuff. I can press change. And we can see all around this page stuff has been added. So at the top here, we now see double wall box and good. With the impression, with the print, we can see in the neat colors, we have black and blue. And with the machines, we can see the slaughter and the Ottoman have been checked with an X that I pressed in there. So that is how you can fill in this file. Of course, it's a very complex file that really shows you how far you can go with this. If you put in the time and if you put in the little bit of you know design work on how you want to organize this, you can create a really complex file that contains all the information that you want to see when you are in production and what, what you want to pass on with your production file. So how do we do this? Let me close this and nope. let's go back to this empty sheet that I opened before. Now you actually, you start from an empty sheet, just like you would start your drawing. I can use the rectangle tool here with the drawing tools to create rectangle, go to this access spot, pull it open and give it a certain size. So let's say I want this to be an portrait A4, then my X would be 210 millimeters and my Y would be 297 millimeters. I'll say OK. And we have our A4 sized page here. Now I'll probably want some margins around my page just for the printer and for the good look of it. I can use these construction lines for that. So there is a construction line, a line at a distance that I can use to create a line at one centimeter from the edge. And I can do that on all sides. So I'll yes and no. No and yes. And at the bottom as well. Yes and no. And I have construction lines all around this A4 page that show me the margins that I would like to see on my page. Then I can start deciding what information I want to have on this page. To do that, we simply need to use the text tool. Now, if we input text, we can either just type everything in the cutting line. It doesn't really matter for this specific purpose because we're just creating a printable file. So if we use cutting line, it will print as red. We could also set the line to blue and maybe we want to type in blue. Maybe that's a better way to do it. So I'll go for the text tool, input text, and I'll start by adding the date. I'll type date. The little brackets I put around this here, that doesn't really uh, do anything, but I use brackets to indicate that I'm creating a field that will automatically be filled in. So one of the form questions. What I did in the example was simply do this. You can do that as well. Then you indicate it is a question. This is very important. You fill in the checkbox for question here and we will add a default value because the default value will automatically fill in the date. Now, if I open this drop-down box, we see a lot of incomprehensible parameters here. So all of these start with an ampersand. That means it will automatically be filled in. And the letter behind it, or the bunch of letters behind it, show you what will be filled in. For the date, we don't have to look very far. We can go for ampersand D. The D stands for date. So I'll click that. And then I'll say place text. 
I get my little text box here and I might want to place this in the top right corner over there. Now we can see the date box is being added there. Now this will actually not look very good. Let me erase that and do that again because I would like it to be aligned to the right. And we can also choose the dimensions for this. The dimensions, uh, I put it on size seven. I believe this means seven millimeters X height. So I'll place it back, place, and we'll put it over here in the corner. And now it will align to the right. Then maybe I want to add the name of the product or my own name or the job name. So let's call it job. And this one will not be automatically filled in because of course the job will not be known. So we will not enter a default value. We will simply leave this empty, but it is still a question. It is still something we want to fill in. I'll align it to the left, place text, and I'll put it over here. Then we need to choose where we want our drawing to be. So to decide that, at the useful space. The useful space is what area of the page we want to use for the drawing. This is where the drawing will automatically be placed when you add technical data sheets later. Now I can simply select an area. So maybe I'll use this part of the page for the drawing. But of course, if you want to be more specific about which area of the page is being used by this, you can use more construction lines to decide where you are putting this box. Now, maybe I want to know the operator. Now, the operator is actually quite simple because you can automatically rator, and I will make this a field, place text. I'll put that here underneath the drawing. And as I said, it's actually quite simple to do that because I can automatically draw this information from the licensing information of the application. So the operator would be the user. So I think it will be the U. I can place this text and I'll put it just behind operator. There we are. It finds out my name from the licensing information and it automatically fills that in. The same way it automatically filled in the dates for me earlier. Now there are more things we can do here. Let's say we want to know in our drawing how long the cutting lines are. This can be interesting because if you know how fast your cutting table can cut, then the distance of your cutting lines will be interesting because you will know how long it will take for that box to be cut out of the cart. The same way, if you work with a more with an older process where you actually create metal uh, forms to cut out cardboard physically, you might want to know how many knives you need, how long the knives need to be for that specific box, and that will decide the cost of the form. So that's very interesting to know as well. To do that, we can go total length of cutting lines and then we will say this is a question and we will use a different parameter the lgco here this is actually french so it means longueur coupure je pense so we can actually use this and this will automatically calculate by making the sum of all the cutting lines in the drawing how long all your cutting lines are now, we don't need to add the question yet, so let's place the text first because I made this something that will be just printed. Oh, I see I've been underlining everything. You don't need to do that. I have this checkbox checked for underlined. Now I can make this a question. I can say this is a question. We will use the longer coupure here. And even we can make it more interesting. Instead of just adding a number, we can add millimeters to this. And now when I place this text, 
we will see the cutting lines used in this example are 1014 millimeters. So it will just add that behind the calculated value. Now the cutting lines it shows here is simply the bounding box of the page that I made. When you're importing a technical data sheet with an existing drawing, it will actually ignore anything that is used in the technical data sheet and it will only calculate anything for your drawing itself. So maybe I'll remove the underlining here and we can do the same for folding lines because this matters for all the same reasons that cutting lines matter. I'll make it not a question, place the text and we will put that here. And then the same way I will make this a question again. And now for this one, we do not need the longer coupure, but the longer rabat. This means folding lines. So I will use this and I will add millimeters again, place text, and we can place that here underneath the data sheet. Of course, text is not being counted towards folding lines, so it currently says zero millimeters. This isn't actually positioned really nicely. We can see this isn't actually a really nice height. We can always move stuff around. I didn't actually use that much, but there is the Displace tool, which is over here. And with the Displace tool, you can grab something and you can move it around the page and place it somewhere else. And that way you can decide if it's positioned correctly. So maybe I want it to be here. There we go. And that way you can work for all the different line types. You can see there are a variety of the LG uh, questions here. All of these have to do with different line types. So you can calculate the length of any of those. And then of course, there are some others here. We see X max, X min, Y max and Y min. Those are maximum and minimum X and Y values, so that from the origin point, it will calculate the max X value and the minimum X value. And we also have the forma X and forma Y, and also the HD X and HD Y, which you can use to, to calculate the width or height of the drawing. So I can make another one here that will say width of the design colon and then we will not make this a question. We can place this a bit lower here and we will make it a question. Question and use the HDX and also place the millimeters in there because it will also be a distance and maybe I'll line that up with those. And then the same thing for height, and we will use the Y axis for that. Place, place that here, and also make it a question for the questionnaire. So we will use question, and we will use the HTY for that. Place, and I'll put that lined up with the other one. Okay, so now we have various information fields in here, but pretty much all of these, except for job, fill themselves in. So just for fun, we can also add a few that do not fill themselves in. So maybe I can create a comment field. Maybe I want to have that in a box. So let's use the tool here to create a box at the bottom of the page. And inside the box, I want to make comment field, which is underlined, comments, not a question, place text, and I'll put that inside the box. And then I will say comments line one, because the text will always be placed on one line. So if you want multiple lines, you will have to create multiple input fields for that. I'll make that a question and I'll leave this blank so we can fill that in ourselves, place text, and this is line one. And then I might want a line two. We leave all the rest the exact same way. Oh, I've underlined these, that's probably not necessary. And a line three, place text, and we can have a line three. 
Okay, I can quit this and now we can see what our job file will look like. I have to save this, so I will say save and I'll put it on the desktop and I'll call it test save and now we have this. Now we can create a new page, so a new blank page and I will make a little drawing on this. So I will create a Oh, this should have been, well, not really. I'll change this to cutting lines and I'll use add a face to create a few faces. Just so we have a few line types in there. So we definitely at least have the folding and cutting lines. Okay, there we go. Now we have a few lines and I will say add a technical data sheet, insert a technical data sheet. Now you see our sheet isn't here, that's because it doesn't know which file I want to use yet. So I can use the add button here and the add button gives me a finder window and in the finder window I can select test and we can see the preview for that here. I'll say open and now we have it in here as well and I can simply say OK and our sheet is being added with the drawing in the middle. We get the questionnaire again. So the date, is the date correct? Yes, because it just takes a date from the operating system. We can see at the bottom right here, it says 23rd of October, 2018, and that's the date it used here. The job field is empty because it doesn't know what job this is. So this is just the webinar for the secrets job. And then the operator is me because the program is licensed to me as a user. And then it automatically calculated the total length of the cutting lines, the total length of the folding lines, the width of the design and the height of the design here. And we have three empty comment lines. So comment line one has to be, this is a test model for the webinar. It is a very nice box. I just want to fill in line three. Change, and we can see this is also being added. It added webinar secrets to the top left here, and everything we wanted to have in this data sheet has been added. Now I see, well, Maybe I want to box this in because now the drawing is just like thrown in there and it doesn't really seem, it just, it feels too open. Maybe I want to box that in. Well, you can always change the sheet you are working on. You don't have to, to start from zero. You saved the file before. All you have to do is open that file. So I'll save this as test one, put it on the desktop and I can simply open my previous test file from the desktop. So the data sheet I was using, which is just test, open that up and I'm back in my field here. So if I want to have a box around this, what, what I can easily do is I can create a box, but maybe let's remove that for now. Let's create the box first and I'll create my box, the size I want it to be. And then I can create a new useful space definition and I can make it a little bit smaller than the box. So my drawing will not touch the edges of the box. There we are. So now there is a box around that. Now, if I decided that maybe I don't like having these lines underlined, I can just go to text. Your text tool will remember the last things you've used. So if I go back to total length of cutting lines, which is this one, and I say, I do not want this underlined. I can use the eraser tool to erase this line. Not a question, place text, and I can put this back. And now we have it without the underline. The same thing with the question. Make this a question, change it back to total length of cutting lines. Question, this will be the coupure and with millimeters behind it, place it back where it was, and now it's no longer underlined. So that is how easily you can adapt these. I can quit, I can just save this, go back to the sheet I had opened before, 
So let's open test one before. Okay, now, so this one has my drawing, but it also has a technical data sheet. What I can do is I can just delete the technical data sheet by itself. So I can only delete the data sheet. If I do that, then I still have my drawing and I can change the drawing and I can insert a technical data sheet and put it back with the new information. So good job. And I want to add a comment. This is a cool webinar change. This is changed, this is changed. The total length of the lines is still here. Now what happens if I'm working and I don't feel like uh, removing the data sheet? What I can do is I can simply draw something new. So let's say we're just uh, putting a little drawing here. Now you can always recenter the technical data sheet. So there is this thing, center the technical data sheet, and then it will include the new data around it. It will add the drawings you have within the useful space you have defined. Insert a technical data sheet. Yes. You can easily change the values by renewing the data sheet. So the width and the height will also have changed because it will start from the top and end at the bottom of this. Now I'll show you the big one again. So let me remove this one. Yes, I'll remove it. And I will insert the technical data sheet. I will insert the demo sheet. Okay. And this is the big demo sheet that really shows you how far you can go with your technical data sheet. You can add some styling by using italic scripts, which is your company name. The company name, by the way, is another thing that you can add that is based on licensing. So if you have a question, you can use the S and that will be the company. So if I do that, I can add four piece to the file. Of course, the company bit will not be visible if it is loaded in from the technical data sheet afterwards. I hope you learned something today. I hope you get to use this. You can subscribe or register for any upcoming webinars on the 4Piece website, 4Piece.com, underneath the events tab. You will be able to find all our upcoming webinars and register. They are always free and they are always interesting. My name is Michiel. I'm 4Piece's application specialist. Thank you for joining us and have a nice day.